Welcome back! And it's time to talk about the next part of the TOC instrument! So we just got finished talking about the auto sampler, right? And we talked about the purpose of the auto sampler. It's allowed me to put samples onto the instrument. I can inject maybe 68, 69 of them at a time. I allow that injector to do its job and inject the samples when they get ready to be injected. So I do not have to worry with sitting over by the instrument and injecting them one after another, after another, after another, after another, okay? So we talked about two different major pieces of the auto sampler that I can do some maintenance on. One, of course, was the needle. And we said that needle can get crudded up over time and it might need to be replaced. And then the other one is the pump that really sits on the back end of the auto sampler. And that can also be replaced quite easily as well. And the purpose of that pump is to really help suck sample up and into the instrument and to also allow it the auto injector to rinse itself with some of the DI water that's uh, going to be located in the bottle that's next to it. So we talked about making sure that that stays clean, making sure that that bottle stays rinsed out very well, and putting fresh water in there daily if possible. And in the last part of the last video, we talked about this concept of going into the instrument. And the very first entrance point that goes into the instrument after it leaves the auto sampler is up here at the very top. And in this schematic, this is going to be what we call the eight point valve. All right. So this eight point valve is going to be a pretty major piece of the equipment because this is really the traffic controller. OK, so imagine you at an airport and imagine those people standing down on the runway with their brought cones. All right. And they are directing the airplanes to come in and out. This is basically the job of the eight point valve. The eight point valve is called eight point because there's eight entry exit points that this valve could have access to. And if you take a look at the way that they're labeled up here at the top, here is one, there's two, there's three, there's four, there's five, there's six, there's seven, and there's eight. So that is where the eight is coming from. That is the eight point valve. And this valve will kind of turn and twist and go to the entry or exit points that it needs to. So if you take a look at the top over here to the left hand side, you're going to see what four of those are. First one, entry point for what we call dilution water. So the sample could need to be diluted or my standards might need to be diluted. And in order to dilute them, I need deionized water. Therefore, it needs to pull deionized water from somewhere. Well, there's the entry point for that water. There's point one. The next one is the acid intake tubing. All right, so acid is going to be required for this method to work. We'll talk about why much later. But I need a place for acid to come in. Well, it looks like that acid line is going to go to a second point in the eight-point valve. So when it needs acid, it will turn to that door, and it will open that door up, and it will pull acid in, and it will close the door back. All right? If it needs water, it goes to the water door, it opens that door up, it sucks the water in, and then it closes that door back, and then that way it doesn't have access to that anymore. The next one is the ASI connection tube. And now you know what the ASI is. It is your auto sample injector. All right? So there's point three. Point four is the sample tubing. So my sample has to go in somewhere, and then my sample is going to eventually go to another part of the machine. But that's line four. Line five, drain tubing. Well, things are going to have to drain out of the machine, maybe extra pieces or extra parts of the sample that I don't want or that the instrument doesn't want. Right? It's got to go somewhere. There's got to be an exit point. That's number five. Number six is the point or the valve that will open up to allow the sample that needs to be measured 
to go out of that injector site and into the TOC instrument. And then number seven and number eight, they're not really listed here. And the reason is because these two valves or ports or points actually go to a modified TOC. And that modification is for a instrument that will also measure inorganic as well as organic. So that's why you're seeing no lines involved at those because normally a TOC instrument doesn't need those. We're not looking for the IC component. We're only looking for the TOC component. All right. Okay. So that's the eight point valve that we need to discuss. And it's right up there at the top of the schematic. So in a test or on an assignment, I could actually give you a close or zoomed in area of that picture and I will say why well, there are eight there. Okay, give me the reasons that eight points are there. And you would tell me, well, one's for water, one's for acid, one's for the auto sampler, one's for the sample, one's to drain everything, one's to go to the actual combustion tube is what we're going to end up calling that and then two are going to be open and those two are open because they will go to a different attachment that goes on to the TOC system all right okay so let me give you a real picture of what this thing looks like so here's the TOC instrument with the door opened and here are the internals of the TOC the eight point valve is going to sit right up here at the very top Okay, that is the line. There's going to be a line that goes from the auto sampler and it goes into the side of the machine and it gets connected right in there. There's one of the pieces of tubing. And you see all of this other tubing on the inside, right? So there's going to be eight possible, eight pieces of tubing that's going to be connected right up here at the very top. Again, that is to control the flow of what goes in and what goes out. Well, that eight-point valve can be replaced. Over time, filthy, nasty, gunky material will start to set up crud in this eight-point valve if you're not keeping everything clean, and that needs to be replaced. All right. Again, it's one of those things that can easily be replaced, and you do not need someone to come and do it for you. All right. Well, this metal piece up here at the very top, you've got to be careful because that metal piece is not the actual valve. That metal piece is actually just really the rotor, the motor, that makes this thing turn to the door that needs to be opened up. All right, so the only thing that I have to do is unloosen that, or loosen it, not unloosen. We're going to loosen it. So that thing just kind of screws off of there. And then you have access to this piece right there. So here is the motor that allows this thing to turn to the door that needs to be opened up and closed up. And then up underneath that, this is where your eight-point valve is going to be located, right there. All right, well, that's another piece that can easily be changed out. The only thing that you have to do is unscrew this. You just give it a good turn, and then this cap basically comes off. And up underneath that silver cap, you're going to see a piece of what looks like plastic. And that is your eight-point valve right there. As you can see, there is one opening, and the rest of it's kind of closed up. And that one opening right there, there's one on the opposite side, is, of course, right? That will turn to the door that needs to be opened, and it will allow that liquid to come into the TOC instrument. And then that will turn and close itself off. The way that I want you to think about this is kind of like a stopcock. It's a stopcock on the end of maybe a separatory funnel or the stopcock at the end of a burette. It's made out of a very similar substance, right? It's that kind of inert plastic that is not chemical reactive. It is very inert. That's what we mean by that. And it's kind of like a PFTE material. Okay, so that is the purpose of that piece or the eight-point valve. That's the actual valve itself. This thing is very cheap. It's $35.
That's all that there is to it. So for $35, I can get this piece to be sent to me. And then when I get it in the mail, I'll just open it up. I'll go to my TOC and I'll take this off, remove the old one, put the new one in, put the cap back on, give it a good turn and tighten, and then put the rotor back on top of it. That's all that I have to do here to change out the eight point valve of my TOC instrument. All right, so here's a video. You're gonna see them open up the front door and after the front door is opened up, you'll see the motor up here at the top. So they'll zoom in on that area and they'll show you the removal of that motor and they'll pop that off the top. And then there's your eight point valve area. So they'll loosen that and unscrew the cap off. Then they'll take a pair of pliers. They'll remove that piece of plastic and they'll put the new eight point valve back in and they'll put the cap back on and screw it tight. And then they'll put the motor back on to that assembly and they'll tighten that up as well. So that's all that you have to do to change out an eight point valve of the instrument. All right, that's it folks. Nothing more than that. Okay, so that's it of the story of the eight point valve. And in the next video, we'll move on and we'll talk about the next part of the schematic. And the next part of the schematic will probably be the syringe that you're seeing down here below. Uh, so in the next video, that's what we'll discuss. So come back and see me. You're not over with yet.